They say the world's full of promise. Change is constant. So spinning in the cycle of life, you choose an option. Some lead, some follow, some drown inside the sorrow. But gaze towards the stars and prayers to see them all. Joyful moments never ending. The magnet pulls us towards things never imagined. Chasing the mirage with stardust in our eyes. It's a magic we possess in the test. I like is it okay? Is it okay if I pick the piece of wood that you work with today? One thousand percent, sure. Yeah. All right, because I'm gonna, I I kind of want it to speak to me. Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna look around just for a second here. I want to find I want to find the right piece of uh, what what is the wood that you have here? Like all up in the rafters. Uh, there's white cedar, red cedar, cottonwood, poplar, uh, basswood, butternut. Um, but most of what you're seeing in the upper, uh, rafters, there's cottonwood bark, cotton. Oh, it's bark. Yeah. It's not even wood. Right. Okay. It's outside of the wood. All right. I want to go find, I want to go find the right one. Just hang on one second. Sure. This is the one that I picked, Alec. Beautiful. Would would you have ever thought that this is the one that I would that I would have grabbed from the shelf? Um, it's not super surprising because uh, one of the things you want to look for is a natural uncut edge, and this has that. So I could see it. Right. How did I do? Good. You did well. You did. This is a cool piece. It's a triangle, which is a very strong shape. Yeah, and you, I mean, you're an award winning uh, wood carver, wood artist. Just go, just go ahead and clean it off a little bit, you know. What, what are you looking at right now? Like, what's, what's going through your head? Um, right now, I'm thinking, uh, gosh, this thing is so dusty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's my, it's so hard to carve dusty pieces of wood. <laughs> In my experience, you know, yeah. yeah. You know, when you just grab a piece of wood and it's just so dusty. It's very distracting. I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah. So really what I'm thinking about uh, with the dust is like the deposit of sediment, dirt, and stuff that collects over the years from uh, just being out uh, the outer part of a tree that can damage the, the edge of a tool. So mm. I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible uh, so that it doesn't dull my tools quite as much. You can get started if you want, but sure. is, is it is it cool for me to talk to you while you're while you're carving? Yeah, totally, absolutely. I don't know, like when you're, oh man, it's gonna Dang. get messy. Right, I love that though. Okay, this is a, you know, I know that there's gonna be people who are gonna watch this and listen to this, and they're wondering. And I'm going to feel so stupid asking the question. I'm going to feel so dumb asking this, but I'm going to ask it because people are wondering and I'm wondering. Are you ready? I'm ready. I think I'm ready. Is <laughs> Do you feel like the wood is speaking to you? Mm. Like like when you're, you're, hold, you're holding the wood, I know you got the dust off and stuff, but like when you... When I handed it to you, did you like? Did you already know what it could be? Mm -hmm. You know, as you're kind of like getting the outside, or do you not even think about that? It's okay if you don't even think about it either. Mm -hmm. I just want to know, like, because when I hold a piece of wood, I'm like, it's like a piece of wood. <laughs> but that's but this is how you make your living, you know? Right. Um. So with that thing of uh, you saying, you know, it's uh, does it speak to you? Yeah. I doesn't really like, uh, you know, most of the time, thankfully, it doesn't audibly speak to me. Um, other, <laughs> otherwise, I might be... Uh, right. This would be a different type of podcast. Yeah, I'd probably be talking to a counselor or a psych. But um, I, somebody did once ask me what uh, my carvings tell me and what, what maybe they, if they speak to me. And I yeah. said that uh, if they did speak to me, they'd be saying, ah, <laughs> stop! <laughs> Because most of them are human figures. Yeah. And so they'd be very unhappy if I was carving on them. Uh, probably, right? So, no, but uh, all kidding aside, the, there is an element of um, the wood telling you what it wants. And what I mean by that is this. 
Yeah. When you're carving in a piece of wood, sometimes something will break off, right? That you didn't intend to mm. break off, especially mm. when you're carving a piece of found wood. So this is a material that has its own kind of weathered character. It has its own natural shape. Right. It has limitations, right? I can't go beyond the boundaries of this piece of wood. Right. And so what's beautiful about that is um, it's defined by those limitations. So because I have uh, only the ability to work within the parameters of the piece of wood, um, I am then limited to stay within those boundaries, right? So then there's the shape of the wood, there's the character of the wood, the flakiness, the weathering of the wood causes it to be um, less um, homogenous or even all the way through. So these things dictate the shape the outcome of the carving. So in that sense, the wood speaks because it has a shape. It speaks because it yeah. is worn out and old and might flake off. And then you have to then adapt to whatever it does on its own. Mm -hmm. And so there is this sort of like collaboration that happens with uh, with a found piece of wood that you don't get with like a milled block of wood. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then with regard to your other question, like, how do I decide what to do? Yeah. Um, for me, um, my main interest is people. Right. So I'm always thinking about uh, people. I'm looking at people. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm at the grocery store and I see an interesting face and I'm trying to take a mental note. You know, like, what a great nose that guy has or that lady has. And so you're trying to be discreet, you know, and creep anyone out. But, uh, yeah. But so, they could become a wood carving. You never know. You, you never, never know. know if you see Alec at the store and yeah. just checking out your nose. It's true. It's happened. <laughs> it's happened before. Yeah. So yeah. when when you when you're holding this piece of wood though, do you you feel like you feel like something wants to come out of it and you're just kind of delivering it or what? You know, of course Michelangelo or Michelangelo would talk about that you know how uh, he sees it within the wood it's art maybe it's already there and he wants it to come out right that's that's, that's kind of what i'm getting at like yeah. is that a thing for you or are you just kind of like you know what i'm just gonna I'm just gonna take my knife here and, and see what happens yeah um you know i think there must be some element of that because there are times where you make something yeah that you're not capable of making right and so I almost, I often feel like, you know, I should say I'm not happy with every carving, you know, maybe like one out of every 10 carvings actually really cool, you know, but on those days when I make something that I really love, you know, I don't want to sell, I want to keep, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't feel like I actually have the skills to make when it's done. I feel as disattached from it as other people. Yeah. And that's a blessing because it means that I get to appreciate it. Right? Because I don't feel like, oh yeah, I remember those cuts and those steps that I, yeah. it's not like a math equation where I could show you the pattern, right? It's making, that's why it makes teaching so difficult. Why teaching is so interesting to me is that I'm still deconstructing this for myself. Maybe that makes me a bad teacher, but <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to figure it out in real time. So yeah, when you're carving, uh, is it kind of like a flow state for you like what do you think about do you think about life do you think about relationships do you just think about the the piece that you're making um yeah don't really think about a lot i think that's what's nice is i have a very uh i think i have a busy mind mm -hmm. and, uh, it's and it seems like maybe it's so busy and a lot of people can probably relate to this that i don't always know what i am feeling or thinking at any given moment and so what's nice about carving is it slows me down and uh, I don't have to worry about that stuff. I'm not thinking about any of it really, you know. So it does keep keep things simple for me. Yeah. How many years have you been carving? Um, I've been carving for 16 years now. Mm. And... What was what was the first thing that you what was the first piece of wood that you sank your knife into 
and you carve something, and you're like, this looks really good. I like this. Um, I'm proud of this. I was pretty proud. What is, what is that, by the way? This is a gouge. So you were just using a knife, a knife, and now you're using a gouge. Yeah. So gouge is a curved chisel. So it's got like a rounded, like mm-hmm. a curved end yeah. to it. Is that my nose? Um, <laughs> <laughs> not, it might be. It's okay. I honestly thought about it. It's okay. I'm not posing for you. I'm just here to ask <laughs> questions while you're carving. I'm gonna grab a quick. Yeah, what what was the first thing that you you carved? I get maybe like sixteen years ago, mm. and you realize I think I have a knack for this. Right. I like this. Hmm. I mean, I think I knew pretty much from the first carving I made that I was uh, I was into it, you know, because I really hadn't experienced. I mean, I, everyone's kind of sat there and whittled on a stick as a kid, you know, mm-hmm. with uh, their pocket knife. Like most boys, at least, have done that, but. I hadn't really experienced this sort of like all encompassing um, absorption in anything. Yeah. Um, before uh, carving. And so the first time I tried carving, I think my busy uh, monkey brain, uh, as everyone seems to call it nowadays, was uh, quieted for the first time. So, yeah, I just felt like something something special was happening for sure i just didn't i just didn't feel like uh i'd ever experienced that where three hours just just completely gone you know mm. as, a, as a 12 year old boy you know not a lot of things did that for me so you're able to make your living being an artist yeah carving carving wood did you ever have a time where you wondered if, if this would be possible at all like, did you ever think you're going to have to get like a, I don't know, like a big kid job right. or a degree yeah. or did you always know like, you know what I could, this is how I could make my way through the world. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Uh, there was a period of time, actually multiple periods of time as a kid where I had to uh, kind of think about things, you know, cause there were people that I looked up to and respected a lot who mm-hmm. said, you know, don't you want to like have nice stuff you can't you can't make wood carvings for a living and have nice stuff you know like you can't be an you know you can't make carvings and uh so i remember somebody i won't say who it was but somebody said to me who i really looked up to and i still think she's a great person but said uh you like really expensive food like avocados and all this stuff like how are you planning how are you planning on doing carving and buying all these expensive avocados avocados and so man i just really when you said expensive food avocados was <laughs> that's not the first thing that i thought you were gonna say <laughs> that was her first thing so it stuck with me man but no i really i mean i took some that's the lighthearted one but i took the more serious ones to heart you know because these people i looked up to and mm-hmm. i didn't know i hadn't lived life yet i thought maybe i maybe i am crazy i don't know maybe this is not maybe I, my ignorance is is showing my homeschooled uh i don't know it, you know just lack of life was uh showing so i figured out that uh if i went to college it was pretty cheap and um, it would be kind of a backup plan so i started mm-hmm. going to school and then uh i went for a while and then i met a geology professor who uh, at the beginning of class said that uh you know basically every one of you here is hugely benefited from from having a a degree. And so your odds of having a, a high paying job without a degree are very low. In fact, here are the stats. And then I remember emailing him afterwards some pictures of my art and telling him what I was considering do you know what I did kind of then cuz I was already starting to teach and do a little bit of uh you know one-on-one stuff and group classes and just starting to sell my art and uh he said, "You know, I really think you should consider doing this. I think you have something special." Oh man, so this is the person who said the odds of people being able to be successful right. in art are low. Right. But you sent him your stuff, and he was like, go for it. Yeah, he kind of gave me the green light. And uh, Actually, one of the most meaningful uh, interactions I had was with my dentist. I was sitting in his chair, and he said, you know, Alec, I hear you're in school. If my kids had your abilities, you know, at your age, I don't know that I would send them to school. 
Really? I would encourage them to do what they love because you know what? Not a lot of people have a skill that they fostered. Mm-hmm. And you know, not everyone needs to have a degree. And I listened to him. Of course, every every young man wants to hear he doesn't have to go to college, right? So, mm-hmm. so yeah, I, I dropped out and I went for a couple of years just pursuing carving. And then I got the same avocado lecture and then went back to college. And uh, I finally decided, you know what? I don't need, I don't need to go. <laughs> I don't need this. To do what I already am going to end up doing when I leave here, right? Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm glad that I went for sure. It's not, it's, there's no regrets there. It was an awesome experience. I learned how to write and that stuff is helping me out now, uh, as I've got a, you know, writing a book with a publisher and that those skills are, you know, they don't, they're not, uh, lost on me now. So that's good. Um, but yeah, I didn't, uh, ultimately didn't need it. feel like uh, I kind of have a I kind of have a tendency to uh, Jeremiah can attest to this he's behind me he's helping to produce our podcast today but I kind of have a tendency to I fill every silence with uh, something to say right I always have something to say or a question or a thought or something insightful. But uh, I feel like while I'm watching you, I just want to, I just kind of feel, I feel like I'm in that flow state too. Like there's a face, there's a face that's showing up from that piece of wood. And I am completely mesmerized by it that is crazy man you're killing it thanks bro it's not every day that people show up with uh you know seven or eight cameras to film (laughs) film you doing this so it's kind of a little bit it's fun for me too so i have a list i have a list of people that i've wanted to sit down and and uh, have conversations with passionate people and you're one of the people at the top of my list i appreciate for that. sure man i, I Thanks, was like David. i was like i gotta somehow get a microphone and a camera over to alec uh, because people have to see what this what this person is capable of i appreciate that yeah i was honored i'm really honored that you had me on honestly i was uh first of all i was really stoked to hear that you're doing this because uh, it's such a it's such a great it's such a great thing for you if it fits you well. I appreciate it. it. You know, like having a podcast or telling a story is definitely uh, it's such a saturated market. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't I don't want to just be out here. I don't want to just be out here uh, telling stupid stories or reflecting on dumb things. Like I I really want to talk to passionate people and. Mm-hmm and catch them in their element. Do you regularly make trips out to Wyoming, Montana to go and, and find the wood that you're going to turn into art pieces? Yeah. Is it just you? Um, just you in a truck or do you turn it into a big experience? I turn it into a trip with friends because, uh, I personally, I wouldn't really probably, I don't know how much fun I'd have doing that, uh, on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, who knows? Yeah. Do you just like stop on the side of the highway and you're like, "Hey, look, there's some wood." <laughs> like, how do you how do yeah. you find how do you find the wood that you're gonna turn into something? I do. Um, I I end up. Um, first of all, we rent a U-Haul. <laughs> when we first went out there. We just brought my van. I had this like a uh, kind of like a Sprinter van. Ford makes a Sprinter van called a Transit. Yeah. And uh, I had a Transit van, and uh, we would wake up and be covered in ticks and. Uh, with the wood, you know, we sleeping with the wood was not the best. We figured out that that wasn't the best you option. You slept in the U-Haul? Well, we slept in my... Tra- I owned a transit. This is before. Oh, right. So this, okay. is pre- this is preceding. Yeah, so there are fishing access sites out there. At, oh. Uh, public property. And uh, the trees are they're dead and fallen. And 
So you can actually you can actually take wood from these dead fallen trees. You know, you're not chopping anything. You don't bring any saws with you. You're not bringing axes or stuff like that. You're just uh, collecting fallen dead pieces of wood. Yeah. So yeah, that's, it's a beautiful experience, man, being out there amongst the, the trees and seeing the mountains out in Montana and Wyoming. Just the, it's a beautiful, beautiful experience. finish a project and like you see you see this this piece of cotton bark and you have brought a beautiful face from it yeah i mean this is this is a piece of wood that definitely could have just been a piece of firewood right and now there's this face kind of like coming coming from the wood yeah <sighs> do you ever feel do you ever feel like the the piece of wood is like thank you, <laughs> you know because I'm just I'm it's just an thinking, interesting question I, I'm just thinking no that, one's ever asked that I know I'm just thinking that you know a a piece of wood like you're holding very easily could be just a piece of firewood or not hmm. even used for that just like just kind of disintegrate and rot in, into the ground right and but it's turned into this beautiful piece of art where there's like man there's there's a face there's like a personality <laughs> there's yeah there's something that would not have existed if it wasn't from your hands do you do you ever feel or consider that the wood is like thanks for honoring Th- thanks for yeah. honoring me yeah it's cool that you're thinking that way yeah i think people um maybe I, there's something i need to learn there but uh personally i don't really think about the wood as being um, animate or like having its own kind of thoughts or other than again, the, the dealing with the sort of character of the wood. Um, I often feel like I'm the one that's more blessed by the wood though in the process. Like I feel like I almost feel like, thank you at the end of it. Like, um, because it just let me be, you know, I feel like it, you know, if you want to, so you put it in your terms. It's like it let me be do what it, what I did to it, you know. Yeah. So that's cool. All right, this will give you a little insight into like mm. how my brain works. Yeah. Ever since I've been a kid, at like Christmas Eve, yeah. I might be like in a car, like looking out the window. I remember this as a kid, yeah. and we drive by one of the like the Christmas tree lots. Yeah. And I, since I was a kid, I've been sad. <laughs> I've been sad for the trees. Hmm. that don't get purchased <laughs> because they because they've been because they've been cut down you know right. like they're there and they're not going to get to be what they were intended to be there for hmm. does that make sense yeah i think that's i think that's where i'm coming from while i'm watching you carve yeah. and i'm looking at this this piece of wood and i'm like this this piece of wood is getting to be something amazing you know hmm. like maybe what is always meant for but i i just remember driving hmm. and looking out the window i'd see these trees and be like man they're cut down like they're they're not going to be anything more than what they are right now wow. right yeah. and and they're not even they're not even going to get get to be a christmas tree in someone's house hmm. i think that's where i'm coming from right with with the, like the piece of wood because i'm like it, it could just be sitting there right in the forest right even if it's a piece of wood you can still find a way to to honor it yeah no i mean that's a that's a fun way i feel like there's a children's book in there somewhere that you might need to write definitely when do you make the decision that this is going to be like a like a sleeping resting face or or this is going to be like an alive like eyes open type thing um i kind of when do you have to make that call when you're carving oh i see when do I make the call? Like, have you already passed that threshold as to whether or not this would be a like a resting face with the eyes closed or yeah. if their eyes would be open? Right. That's a good question. I think, uh, you know, really, 
you can start with closed eyes because there's material covering the eyeball. And then if you don't like that for some reason, uh, in fact, the process of creating carved eyes uh, leaves you with something at a certain stage that looks very much like closed eyes. So you can kind of at that juncture decide if you're going to finish the eyes, open them, you know, where they're looking, all that sort of stuff. So these are all kind of just natural things that you come into when you uh, start developing a carving. So, I mean, at this point, I really could open his eyes if I wanted to. Um, what do you feel like the wood wants? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's like, that's like where I'm, where I'm coming from. Yeah. What do you want? What do you want? Do you want to be awake? Do you want to, do you want to talk to Joe? Man. Do you want to talk to Joe? <laughs> do you want to talk to Joe? It's okay. <laughs> He's shy. He's oh, see, that's what I'm talking about. See, now we're on the, we're on the same level. <laughs> We've got some personality here. Anybody else that can do what you're doing right now? <laughs> I do. I know a lot of people. <laughs> right. <laughs> you are better than me, that's for sure. I appreciate you letting me just sit here and watch. Yeah, of course. I'm glad you listened to your uh, professor and your dentist, man. <laughs> it sounds. I'm happy to see so people. Dumb. I'm happy to see people. Living in their passion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Me too. I'm glad I listened to them too. Yeah. Just to kind of close things out, in terms of the work that we get to do in schools with young people, mm. I I just love to see I love to see people alive, man. Hmm. I love to see people in the fullest expression of of who they are. Yeah. I think that's why I'm so enthralled with what you're able to do with just a stupid piece of wood. Yeah. You know, so. like you're able to he somehow. Didn't, he didn't mean that. <laughs> Sorry. Not a stupid piece of wood. <laughs> uh, I think that that's why I've just been so enthralled with your work, man, because I love to see people alive. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that, and that's what, that's what we do in schools. Like we, yeah. we help kids feel more alive. Hmm. And... Uh, and so seeing you take seeing you take a, a piece of wood and bring it into a really beautiful expression just kind of it just kind of speaks to me as a person, you know. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's cool. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of opportunities that people get to do stuff like that. They yeah. To make something that they're proud of and Mhm. Mm Joe, you're, you're great at that. Uh, Appreciate that. Doing man. that for for those kids and even for me through the years. You know, I remember we would uh, play music together. Mm -hmm. And then uh, years ago, church, right? Right. And you would say things like, man, can't you guys just picture Alec on stage one day? <laughs> right, just, man. <laughs> just encouraging me, dude. Well, that's why, see, I can't do, I can't do what you're doing, but I, I feel the skill that you have with your hands. I feel that with my words. I feel like I'm able to bring yeah, dude, it's huge. Bring out a great expression in people with mm. the way that I communicate in the way that I interact with them. So yeah, that's why I do feel like I am an artist. Yep. with you here. Yeah, but <laughs> still just enthralled by what you're able to do. That's awesome. Thanks for letting me have a conversation with you here in your studio, man. Man, look at that. It needs sandpaper. Does it need some sandpaper? It's gonna be a cold summer better. It's gonna be a cold summer better brace for it. Feel like I'ma break the cycle, I can't wait for it. Feel like I'ma break the cycle, I can't wait for it. 
energy, no vibrational, get away from me. Get away, get away, get away from it. They don't see what they can get, see, they just wanna take from Your me. time coming, that's 100. Ay. All shackles can be broke, I was born to create something. I started and fell from way out of space, I see. Lost this course, somehow ended up in HP. Paved the way for anybody coming like me. Then they finally a see Mind over matter, but grind for your platter. New youngest be thinking like me. You feel it, don't matter. Your dreams can get shattered. I understand that you don't see no purpose in these streets. No purpose in these streets. I've been down on my knuckles. Ten rounds and I ain't trying to hit, get ready to rumble. Viewers on your P's and Q's, you would've learned how to shuffle. You would've learned how to move, you would've learned how to scuffle. If you ain't wanna get boxed, you would've took off your buckle. Each one teach one, call it the family. Nowadays it ain't safe no more. Nowadays it ain't safe no more. Play it safe. Hey, I feel like either run you up a dollar, get away Treat their man like they dangerous, even the Jakes Cause they'll leave you out hanging without a play Yeah, they'll leave you out hanging in front of your race Life of a shooting star, ain't no reason to be chased I'm just going where I gotta go to win a race I'm in my bag, told them save it for another day I see them hating, tell them I don't like them anyway Yeah! Mind over matter, but grind for your platter Do youngest be thinking like me? You feel it, don't matter, your dreams can get shattered I understand that you don't see no purpose in these streets No purpose in the beef, heart filling with rage You would have been in the game, but your head in the cage Blood leaking on the field, soul filling with pain If I was done with you, boy, you would have been in the grave That's the game Mind over matter, but grind for your platter Do youngest be thinking like me? You feel it, don't matter, your dreams can get shattered I understand that you don't see no purpose in these streets No purpose in these streets, I've been down on my knuckles